uh, this is going to be our, our final update on this incident for tonight, which doesn't mean that it's over. It simply means that we're uh, changing our mode of operations. Uh, so we believe now that we have uh, you know, a pretty good confidence that there are uh, two people who are missing and uh, presumably deceased, but of course that's not a decision that we make and we don't actually have our hands on them and we can't see them. Uh, so we certainly believe there are, are two folks who uh, unfortunately um, perished in this incident. We, after that, it's really hard to know. We've, uh, we've confirmed everything we can. There's a lot of debris in the street in front of the buildings. Uh, obviously, this is a pretty violent explosion. So it's possible there, was, there were people walking in front. We're not going to know that. The, we're still putting water on pockets of fire. Uh, still very severe structural instability. It's just too dangerous to put anybody else in there, uh, especially in the dark. So we are going to be back here at first light to start uh, removing that debris uh, to see if we can find the, the folks that we're definitely looking for and then see if there's, uh, there's anybody else who was affected that we don't know about right now. Uh, we do have the reception center fully staffed at South Philly High School. Again, if you uh, are in the 1400 block of South 8th or South Fra Franklin uh, and you haven't come home yet, uh, check in there first. South Philly High School at Reception Center. Uh, our Office of Emergency Management, Red Cross, a lot of other partners will be out there uh, as long as it takes that we have everybody you know, where, somewhere to go for it tonight. Uh, again, all the partners here, uh, licensed inspections, PPD has just been incredible as they always are. Uh, standing side by side with us, again, we're uh, you know we're disappointed in the outcome here. Uh, you know we're, we're thankful, obviously, with an incident like this, it could have been a lot worse. And again, we're hoping it doesn't get any worse uh, in terms of additional loss of life. Still, no injuries to any of our members, but it's uh, still a dangerous scene. It will be that way through the night, and the investigation will also pick up tomorrow as soon as we uh, complete the recovery operations. We're asking for family members and those who may have not seen. Well, we've accounted for everybody. We've accounted now. We've talked to the families of everybody in the affected buildings. But it, there still is the possibility that somebody was walking down South 8th Street and, you know, doesn't check in. So it's uh, it's really hard to know. I mean, literally, there are there's three row houses not there anymore. They are either collapsed or in the street. And we don't know what's between that debris field or what's under that debris field. And, again, this is... Uh, incredibly dangerous operations to start getting in there and doing that. So, uh, you know, it's been, this incident came in at 1136. So we've, you know, we've, that, that window of opportunity to rescue people uh, ha has really closed. And now we're in a recovery mode. And uh, again, we're, we're very, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're disappointed we couldn't do more. Again, I can tell you that just, uh, Herculean effort by those first arriving companies. And again, some of you have probably seen the video that's out there on social media, the citizen video. I mean, they quite literally went into a firestorm. Uh, and, you know, they're disappointed. I've talked to them. They, they wish they could have uh, made that rescue. The, the reality is that was an incredibly dangerous situation. And um, sometimes we, we do everything we can, and it's just, uh, it's not enough. We're also we're getting here at night. You know, we weren't here during the day. I know you're learning more information by the minute, probably by every half hour. We just talk about, like, what you know now about the cause or what may have started this. Oh, we actually don't know anything about the cause. I mean, we don't know anything about the cause. Again, our, our uh, fire marshals have been here largely doing interviews. And tomorrow we'll really start, with again, with the light. Uh, we're going to have lights up tonight, but that's mainly to keep the scene somewhat safe while we continue to extinguish fire. There's still fire in these buildings. Um, so it'll be quite some time before we really understand exactly what happens. So you talked earlier about the street being undermined. Could you talk a little bit more about that and like what needs to be done? No, all, all we know is that it looks like it's undermined. That's not really our, that's not, okay. that quite literally is not our department, but uh, it's something that we have to be cognizant of. Before we move heavy equipment on the street, uh, we need to make sure that it's going to support the weight of that or else we're going to cause a bigger problem. Can you talk well, once how many vehicles were affected? How many vehicles? Yeah. No, we haven't counted how many vehicles were affected. Our, again, our focus has been on the, the buildings. Can you talk once again about the bravery of your men and women? You talk about the fireball and what that is like, just rushing into something like that, not knowing how many people have been hurt or injured. 
you know, this is something that, uh, you know, for our firefighters and, and medics, um, the folks who do this, it's, they'll be the first to tell you, and you've all heard it, it's, it's what we do. Uh, this is the second time in the past several days that I think everybody has seen them do that. Uh, you know, we had the incident the other night where our folks literally walked into a flame front to shut off a valve uh, at a tank farm. Today, they literally dove into a flame front from a gas-fed fire in the middle of a triple building collapse, et cetera, et cetera, and under arcing wires, et cetera, et cetera. So again, I, I can't say enough about what these men and women do. They are quite literally putting their lives on the line every day. Uh, thankfully, again, they're the best in the business. We made a couple attempts here uh, at a rescue. Uh, and again, uh, I, I promise you, if uh, if we can't get to them and our members can't get to them, they just, they, they can't be done because these folks are the best in the business. And uh, I'm honored to be part of that. And again, in that same period of time, while you've seen a couple of the more spectacular incidents, oh, by the way, in that same period of time, we've had, I think at this point, like 15 other working fires in the past several days where, you know, our folks were doing that off camera, behind the scenes, but no less dangerous. Uh, so again, everything we do is uh, is very high risk, and uh, I'm thankful that our folks are so good at it, and they're so dedicated to protecting this community and our neighbors 24-7, 365.